Welcome back. This is the Tutor Wizard. I'm Adrian. Please subscribe right here. What we're doing is linear algebra one. This is chapter three, geometric vectors, lines, and planes. Basically what we're doing is basis for lines and planes in space. And then what we're going to do is describe analytically lines and planes in three space once we have an idea of what a basis of three space is. Why do we call it three space? This lecture specifically, we're going to recap what a basis for a one dimensional line is and a two dimensional plane of vectors is. And then we'll give the same description of what space is and what a basis for space is. Let's get to it. All right, to recap the last video, what we did was a basis and a description of coordinates of vectors in a given basis for a one-dimensional object called a line of vectors or the real number line, and then a two-dimensional object called the plane of vectors. Why are these called one and two-dimensional? Let's get into that. First of all, what we're going to do for one dimension for a line of vectors, we take an arbitrary line. It's got a direction. For convenience, I've made it horizontal in the video. Then you have some willy-nilly vector u in the direction of l. Then what we do is we pick an arbitrary point on that line, which we call O or the origin. We move and translate U so that the initial point of U is at that origin. That sets our unit length. Once we have our unit length, any other point on there creates a position vector. That position vector is the position vector of the point A on that real number line now, which we're going to call it. And then since vector A and U are collinear, we have a theorem from the last video that says that they must be scalar multiples of each other. Long story short, if we arbitrarily pick u to be our basis vector, any vector in the direction of that line can be a basis vector. Once we pick it and move it, that sets our unit length and everybody else's coordinates. If any other vector is a multiple alpha of this basis vector u, then the coordinate of a in that basis is the multiple alpha. And we'll put brackets, it's overkill, but when we get two dimensions and three dimensions and higher, then we're going to have many coordinates depending on the dimension we're in. And just to recap too, the definition of a basis for a line is any vector which is in the direction of that line. So it's either on the line itself or collinear to it on a line parallel. For two dimensions, the plane of vectors in R2, what we're going to do is we're going to take a plane of vectors. How do we describe that? Any two vectors can be put in the same plane or called coplanar if we put their initial points together. So we take U and V, we put their initial points together, they're always in the same plane. How do we describe or what is a basis for that plane now? A basis for that plane is any two vectors which we can always put in the same plane, but if they want to be a basis, they have to be non collinear. And it's important that any ordered pair u and v of non collinear vectors that are coplanar are a basis for that plane. They're in the same plane, but they're not in the same direction. These two vectors, if I take another vector w, u and w are not a basis for this plane of vectors because they are in the same plane. We can put them, but when we do that, w will lie in the same direction as u and Therefore, they are collinear, and therefore, they are not a basis for the plane. But any two non-collinear vectors are a basis for that plane. Then, we did this last time, but using sort of a parallelogram law in this diagram, there has to be some multiple of u, which we can create this parallelogram where, and then some multiple of v, where we get the size of this parallelogram, and then the vector a will be the diagonal on there, and then we can use the definition of addition, long story short, to write a as a mul some multiple of u, plus some multiple of v. And once we do that, once we arbitrarily fix any two non-collinear vectors u and v in that plane, they are automatically a basis for that plane. Once we do that, every other vector, as this is saying, can be written as a linear combination of those two vectors uniquely. And therefore, if u v is a basis, once I write a as a linear combination, the coordinates of a in that basis are those coefficients of that linear combination. Let's do that for three dimensions, which we call space. All right, playing the same game, what we're going to do is a space of vectors and what we call R3. First of all, what Mark Solomonovich wants to guarantee is that if we have three non-coplanar vectors that are not on the same plane, they're going to act as a basis. So that's why we're going to call it a basis in this definition. What does the theorem say? The theorem says, given any arbitrary geometric vector A, we can always write that uniquely as a linear combination of three non-coplanar vectors. So again, just like in a plane, I don't want collinear. I want non-coplanar vectors. They're in the same plane. So they're coplanar, but they're non-collinear. Now what I want for space is if all three of them are in the same plane, then they're coplanar. And what I want is any two vectors are always going to be coplanar, yes. 
But what I want is a third vector, which is non-coplanar with those first two. If I have a set, an ordered pair of three non-coplanar vectors, therefore, our theorem guarantees basically that what is a basis trying to do? A basis try, is trying to uniquely describe every vector A in space as a linear combination of three vectors, and we want to give them coordinates. How do we get those coordinates? The theorem tells us, first of all, we can do it. If I have any vector A in three space, I can always uniquely write that as a linear combination of three non-coplanar vectors. Therefore, that will be our definition of a basis. Any order triple of three non-coplanar vectors, U, V, and W, is what we're going to call a basis for the space of geometric vectors. And then, because I can write A as a linear combination of those three vectors, the coordinates of A in the basis UVW are the coefficients in the linear combination of that description. Let's do the theorem, of, which is the analog to, now that we have coordinates, how do we add geometric vectors and scalar multiply them? You add their coordinates and you scalar multiply their coordinates. Let's do the theorem. Theorem, let UVW be a basis of our three. What is that again? Any three non-coplanar vectors, as long as they're not all in the same plane, they're automatically a basis of three space, which means I can uniquely describe every other vector in three space as a linear combination of those three. Once I do that, assume I've got a basis, U, V, W, which I arbitrarily pick for that space. If that's a basis, and I take any other two vectors, A and B, in that space of vectors, I can write A as a linear combination of U, V, and W with some coefficients, and that's how we get the coordinates of the vector a with respect to the basis U, V, W. Same thing with B. B is in that space, therefore I can write it as a linear combination of those three basis vectors, and therefore the coordinates of B with respect to that basis are the coefficients in that linear combination. Basically, vectors get their coordinates from the coefficients in the linear combination in that basis. Once I pick any three arbitrary vectors which are non-coplanar, they are definitely a basis for three space. Once I fix those three vectors, every other vector in that space can be written as a linear combination of them. That's how they get their coordinates. But what you don't realize at first is there's infinitely many different bases for three dimensions because any three non-coplanar vectors are a basis. And then if I pick another vector, it will have different coordinates in that basis than if I pick another set of three vectors, it'll look different and its coordinates will be different in that basis. So depending on the arbitrary basis you pick, the same vector will have different coordinates. And that's what some of these examples are going to talk about is the coordinates of the vector are dependent on the ambient basis that you pick already. Once I have a basis U, V, W, four space, I can describe A and B in that basis and then therefore they have coordinates. What now we're now saying is what if I want to add those two vectors or scalar multiply them? What it says is you can add their coordinates and you scalar multiply each coordinate by that factor K. Basically, once vectors have coordinates, you add coordinate wise and you scalar multiply coordinate wise. Let's do an example. All right, we got a guest. Alex wants to join us. Example one, let U, V, W be a basis for space R3. Then the description of U, V, and W with respect to that basis U, V, W is given by U is one multiple of U, no multiples of V, and no multiples of W. So its coordinates in that basis U, V, W is 1, 0, 0. Similarly for V, V is just 0 U's, 1 V, and 0 W's. So its coordinates are 0, 1, 0. And W in its own basis, its coordinates are 0, 0, 1. Classically, we call this basis 1, 0, 0. We call this guy I, 0, 1, 0, we're going to call it J, and 0, 0, 1 is going to be K, and this is called the standard basis of R3. It should be noted that we can associate the standard basis to any basis, and once we do this description, now we're going to say that geometric vectors have coordinates with respect to that basis, and we can associate the standard basis to any basis, U, V, W. What? Vectors have coordinates now. Vectors have coordinates now. All right, example two, we've got the other one. Ringo, looks like he's falling asleep. Hopefully that's not like the audience that I've got, but possibly can't like to sleep. If I have some basis i, j, k of R3, what I'm gonna now determine is if I create three other vectors, u, v, w, of course i, j, k is a basis of R3. Therefore u, v, and w have to be some linear combination of i, j, k. They give us explicitly in the question those linear combinations. Therefore, U, V, and W have coordinates with respect to the basis I, J, K. 
What we now want to know is what they're asking is if U, V, and W are a basis of three space. It turns out in the solution, when we look at that, U, V, and W are a basis if they're non-coplanar. That's the definition. But this is hard to check geometrically. So now we've constructed this one-to-one -one correspondence between geometric vectors and three coordinates or three column vectors. Once we have coordinates for vectors, we can now algebraically check this condition instead of having to do it geometrically. Okay, put the kitty back to sleep. Therefore, how are we going to do that? Let's step through it and then we'll do this. We're going to use Gaussian Jordan elimination to REF in an augmented matrix of a system somehow. How are we getting that from this scenario? Just a second, it's exciting. If we have some arbitrary vector in R3, if it's not in the span of U, V, and W, then we can't write it as a linear combination of those guys, which says that those three vectors are coplanar. If they're all laying in the same plane, they can't be a basis for three space because a basis for three space has to have three non-coplanar vectors. So the idea is we're gonna use Gaussian elimination and an augmented matrix in some way to show that those vectors are either laying in the same plane or they're not laying in the same plane. If they're laying in the same plane, they are coplanar and therefore not a basis for three space. If they are not laying in the same plane, they are non-coplanar and then therefore they're automatic a basis for three space. How do we do that? If we take an arbitrary vector in three space, we want to see if we can always find these things we're going to call x1, x2, x3, some unknown variables. We want to find x1, x2, x3 unknowns such that they're the coefficients in the linear combination of describing a with respect to that basis. If I can do that, they're a basis. If I can't and there's some vector which I can't describe this way, they're not a basis. How do I get the algebraic description? Well, let's go back to the first basis. Basically, what we're doing now that we're going to phrase that as Gaussian Jordan elimination of some augmented system, how are we getting that? Everybody forgets we have this ambient basis IJK. We've given the linear combinations or the description of UVW through IJK, and then we're going to pick some arbitrary vector A, which has to have coordinates in IJK as well. So the coordinates of U are the coefficients standing in front of those IJKs. So we get one, negative one negative two is the coordinates of u with respect to the basis ijk. We leave that out and I'm not writing the square with the ijk in there anymore. We're lazy, but this is what we're saying. u has coordinates of that basis. b also has coordinates in that basis ijk. And w has coordinates negative one, two, three in that basis ijk. a was some arbitrary vector we had to imagine that was going to be either a linear combination or not a linear combination of u, v, w. So he has to have still coordinates with respect to ijk. We don't know what they are, but it's some multiple of i plus some multiple of j plus some multiple of k. So the coordinates of a with respect to the basis i, j, k is a, b, c. Now what do I do with that? We're now looking for, once I have coordinates of those four vectors with respect to our basis i, j, k, there's seven vectors going on, i, j, k, and then u, v, w, and a with respect to the basis i, j, k. It gets worse when we go in higher dimensions. You just add more coordinates, luckily, though. Once I have their description in that basis, now what I'm asking for is can I find three real numbers, x1, x2, x3, such that x1 u plus x2 v plus x3 w is equal to that vector a. If that's true, then they are a basis. If it's not true, then they're not a basis because they're coplanar. Here's now finally where we get linear algebra from chapter one and solving three by three linear systems. How do we do that? Once we have their coordinates, we can replace those vectors. And now when I clean this up and erase again, you're going to see if I add this, this is scalar multiplication of a number times a geometric vector. How do I do that? I put it into all of the coordinates. And then I put x2 into all of the coordinates. I put x3 into all the coordinates. How do I add geometric vectors? Coordinate wise. So I'm going to add that coordinate and that coordinate and that coordinate. And once we get that, we're going to see that it's exactly a three by three linear system in the unknowns x1, x2, x3. So moving this up and doing the operations that I said I was going to do, if we scale and multiply each of those vectors by those coefficients and then add those three vectors, starting at the front or the back, it doesn't matter because we can associate, we get this vector, which is a single vector. Now that vector has to equal a, b, c. Or if we look at that, that's going to give us a three by three linear system. What we're now going to do is shut off our how we had to set that up brain and as soon as i've got a three by three system it should be pavlovian i augment the matrix i row reduce to ref and i see whether i have one solution no solution infinitely many solutions but now on top of that i have to use the case of whether i get one solution no solution or infinitely many solutions to ask whether i have the answer yes or no basis so how do we do that i take the linear system i augment the matrix i don't care about the question right now not until i get to ref 
So what am I supposed to do? Get a leading one in the top left corner, eliminate this negative one and negative two. I do that to practice, go look at the previous chapter one, and you can see how to row reduce. Once I do that, I have zeros, I move to the next column, I get a leading one, I get zeros below. Once I do that, I get to REF, the row echelon form. From here, what I see now is, because I have zeros on this side, if I have a row of zeros, I would have infinitely many solutions that would be consistent. Because I don't have a leading one there, the rank of the coefficient matrix does not equal the rank of the augmented matrix if this is not zero, so that would mean it would be inconsistent. So I'm never gonna have a unique solution, but I could have infinitely many solutions, or I could have no solutions. I would get no solutions if this is not zero. Therefore, what we're saying is this system can be consistent or have solutions if and only if this thing, the right-hand side of that equation is zero. But now that gives us restrictions on the ABC. Not any arbitrary vector that you pick ABC will be written as a linear combination. There's a restriction on those three guys. What that says is C in particular, we can solve for in terms of B and A. So as soon as we have two arbitrary coordinates, we know that the third coordinate has to equal B plus three A, a combination of the first two coordinates. Only vectors that look like this will be in the span of U and B and W. So not every vector is in the span of U and B and W, which means they are in fact coplanar, and therefore they cannot be a basis of three space. You'll have to pause and rewind, but this will be the connection. Please subscribe right here. I'll see you next time.